Welcome to the Nature Here TV show. Today we have a guest, Arden Hagen, with us, a bird enthusiast. Arden, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm the field trip chair of the Vancouver Audubon Society. I lead field trips locally around uh, Oregon and Washington. Uh, my wife and I have also led trips around the United States, usually as fundraisers. And we're thinking about doing an international trip uh, later on. And what brought you into really having a passion for birds? I liked them as a little child, and uh, I always liked to check the, the nests out when they were building nests and see the eggs being laid, the chicks being raised. Uh, anytime I found a nest, I felt compelled to climb a tree and look in it. So I've always been uh, interested in them. And, and when, when, did, sorry, when did you feel like you were a serious birder? Like when did you come to that point where you're like, I really, this is really something I enjoy, really a passion that I have? Well, I, I used to, uh, when, we, when my wife lived in Spokane, we used to go up there and, and uh, uh, they had some property up there, her family did, and they had birds on their property. So I'd, I'd go up and walk in the woods and see the birds and I'd come back and look in the, my mother-in-law's uh, bird book. And so she got the bright idea of giving us a bird book for our anniversary one year. And that kind of started the, it. That opened the floodgates right to birding. Yes, became a passion. Great. Okay, today Arden is going to take us through Queensland, Australia. Yes, uh, there's the map of Queensland. Uh, actually, of Australia. Queensland is the upper eastern side, right side of this map. It's quite a large state in Australia. Australia is a big country. It's uh, uh, about the size of our lower 48 states and uh, it has no major freeways crossing it, so it's, it's, you don't get around in Australia as well Very as you do easily, in the United right. States, correct. And it only has about 24 million people, and most of them live on the eastern coast, so. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, most, well, the interior is mostly desert. Clearly why you can't get through it very easily. So this is the state of Queensland. Uh, we started on the lower right-hand corner in Brisbane. We flew up to Cairns, uh, up there where the blue line is, uh, from there, we flew up to Lockhart River, which is a re remote part of the Upper Peninsula. And we drove from there back down to Cairns. Then we flew to Brisbane and drove out to the, to the outback, uh, the Bower on the lower left-hand side there on the red line. So that was the, the route we took okay. on the trip. And this is our group. Uh, the lady on the left is a friend of ours. We went to Kenya. She is the one that lived in Kenya and uh, invited us to go there once. So she came on this trip to Australia with us, and then, of course that's me. And uh, the taller guy is June. He's uh, our tour guide, and he was from Japan. He came there uh, on a uh, research project, and he liked it so well that he stayed. So him and his oh, wife wow. both live in Cairns now. And of course, that's Sherry, my wife on the right. And she took most of the photos, or almost all the photos you're gonna see today. Okay. So, uh, one of the things about birds is they do interesting things. So we're going to show you a video now of a bird called Willie Wagtail. And when you see the video, you'll see why, why he got that? his name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is Willie Wagtail. And he's foraging on the ground for insects. There, you just caught one. Now look at that tail go. Is he quick? He looks pretty quick. He's very quick. This is not speeded up. This is natural motion. Isn't he a cute little guy? He is very cute. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the uh, birds associated with Australia is the kookaburra, and this is a laughing kookaburra. And this bird, they use the call of this bird in all the early Tarzan films because it had a distinct sound, although it never occurs as in, in, uh, in uh, Africa. Oh. Yeah, the kookaburra is only in Australia. Oh. So, <laughs> but they use this call in the African film, so. Okay. Uh, they, yeah. Uh, this is another kookaburra. It's a blue-winged kookaburra. They're, they're, both of these are in the kingfisher family, if you know anything about birds. Uh, it's, it's a kingfisher. And it's a little prettier, it has blue on the wings. So this is where we flew up to the, what they call the Iron Range. This is Lockhart River, Queensland. And this uh, air base was, uh, airport was an air base for the U.S. in World War II. Oh, okay. So 
that's why it's there. And there are no hotels or restaurants in uh, in Lockhart River, so we yeah, stayed in we stayed in single wise behind the airport. Oh wow! <laughs> and uh, interesting thing about uh, Australia: this is the first trip, the only trip we've taken that there were kitchen facilities everywhere we stayed, and we knew this in advance. So we were able to kick, cook our own meals everywhere we went, which was really nice. We cooked them the way we wanted them, and you know, there wasn't any strange food to right, test right. and things like that. So, and each one of these single whites had the name of a uh, World War II air pilot, and ours was named Cookie. Oh. <laughs> so, That's interesting. And as we flew up there, uh, we saw a lot of small forest fires uh, going, and we wondered what they were for. And we found out that the Aborigines uh, traditionally set these fires to open up the forest uh, for travel and for hunting, because it's quite dense. Now they do it more uh, as a fire break, uh, you know, a controlled burn to keep large forest fires right. from occurring. Right. So this is one of the three rifle birds, three species of rifle birds we saw. It's called the magnificent rifle bird. And he's sitting on a branch, and he's displaying for a mate. They have this nice iridescent throat patch. It's beautiful. He has a, you see the yellow lining in his mouth? And he makes a call, and he sits in this forest and tries to attract a mate. <laughs> and one of the family of birds that we loved, especially me and my wife too, was the fairy wrens. They're small birds, very colorful. And they're about the size of our house wren, if you know how big a house wren is. Uh, but they're much more colorful and more, much more interesting. Lots of blues on these, all these birds. Yes, and so you're going to see a video now of, of a superb uh, fairy wren. And he's going to be uh, foraging on the ground, I believe. Yes. This was a feeding area at O'Reilly's. It was a resort in the mountains. And once a, once a day, you get to feed the birds mostly parrots, and these little guys come around, that's a female with him, these guys come around and uh, pick up the leavings. Their tail's like six straight up almost. They're quick uh, too also. Yeah, they're very quick little birds. Okay, so this is uh, another fairy wren, a variegated fairy wren. Look at the colors on that one. Beautiful. Beautiful little bird. And then this is a uh, red-backed fairy wren. Most of these fairy wrens are secretive, but if you do their call, they'll come out and investigate. And check it out. Yeah. They want to know what's going on. Yeah, they want to know who's out there in the territory. This is my wife's favorite uh, fairy wren. It's the white-winged fairy wren. And it we found this one in the outback. See how it stands out against that drab. Yeah, that's amazing. The drab habitat. And he's standing on the tip of that little tiny branch. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he's perched up there. So up in the upper peninsula, there are no paved roads. So when a big truck comes by, your vision is obscured. You have to either stop or slow way down so you don't run into something. And a lot of the side roads have uh, uh, creeks that cross them. And when it rains, they fill up and they're almost impassable. So to get through. they have road signs. Oh, little bypass routes. It tells you which roads are open and which ones aren't. <laughs> So Wait. you don't waste your time getting Going almost there and, and then stuck. find out you can't get there. That's so smart. This happens to be, everything was open when we were there because it was drier part of, the, part of the, uh, the day. So this is us standing in front of a big uh, magnetic termite mound. That's a termite mound? That is a termite mound and there's hundreds of them in this field. You can't see them all, but there's hundreds of them and they call them magnetic because uh, the ridge of the Termite Mound faces north and south. How close so that's to that they, And they build them that huge. way all the time. Yeah, so that's an interesting little tidbit. Okay, so this is the only endangered species we saw on our trip, a golden-shouldered parrot. Uh, we spent several hours, hot, dusty hours, <laughs> on by the road that you saw previously right. looking for this guy, and we didn't find him. Oh. So we spent the night, and the next morning we went to the same area, but moved into the forest a little deeper, and our guide found him within 10 minutes. Of course. <laughs> and this was the only time I saw June overtly 
excited about something. Because no. <laughs> <laughs> this was an endangered species and he wanted us to see it really bad. So right. he threw his arms up and kind of did a, a little, yes. I did it. You know, so I, did. I got him, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was an interesting thing. Um, this is a pied butcher bird. Uh, there, there's a lot of butcher birds in Australia and they're called butcher birds because they catch their prey and they impale them on a thorn or, or snag them on something sharp that'll hold them firmly oh. while they tear the meat off of them. Oh, they're smart. So, yeah. Getting some assistance. Yeah, <laughs> they figure that out. This is a blue-faced honey eater. There's about 55 species of honey eaters in Australia and we saw about half of them. Oh, wow. And this is a rainbow bee eater. You can see a lot of bee eaters in Africa also. Uh, they're called bee eaters because one of their primary foods is, is bees or wasps. And they fly out from their perch like this and grab it, come back to the perch and whack it until it's dead and then they eat, it. they eat them. Wow. Yeah. It looks like about the size of a hummingbird, is it? No, it's bigger than, is it it's big? quite a bit bigger than a hummingbird. Some bee eaters small. are quite large. This one is probably five, six inches. And I was in the car once and I uh, felt something on my arm. Oh. So I looked down and there was a walking stick on it. And uh, walking sticks are normally nocturnal and they don't bite, they eat leaves. So Until we just today when he's on your arm. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, he didn't bite. I just took him, put him outside him the car there. and he let him go. So, yeah. And it's one of the most beautiful butterflies we've ever seen was this Ken's birdwing butterfly. They happen to be mating here. It's quite a large butterfly and it's only found in the Ken's area of Queensland, Australia, nowhere else in the world. But look at those colors. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful butterfly. And of course, if you go to Australia, you have to see a platypus. And we stopped at a roadside cafe uh, where they were advertising for platypuses. And so you pay $6 a head to go in and see a platypus and they guarantee you'll see one or your money back. Oh. I don't think they've ever paid any money back. <laughs> <laughs> because they you were walk, everywhere. You walk down to this pond and if you just wait a few minutes, you'll see one swimming by. A lot of documentaries you see, they're shown in streams, but they also live in ponds like this. So. Was it worth your $6? It was worth the $6. Okay, good. Yeah. And we saw a lot of different marsupials on the trip, a lot of different species of kangaroos, wallabies, wallaroos. Uh, unfortunately, there's so many of them that they become roadkill, kind of like deer here in the United States or mm -hmm. raccoons. You, you see a lot of roadkill um, kangaroos along the way. That's a big roadkill though, that is, compared to a rank. <laughs> yeah. And this is another marsupial that's called an echidna. And we found this along the road and you can see they have quills on the body. Uh, when they get threatened, they roll up into a ball so that nothing is exposed but the quills. And that's supposed to ward off any kind of Unwanted predator. Unwanted strangers. Yes. So these are flying foxes. They're, they're bats, oh very my. large bats. They look huge. They have a three foot wingspan. Oh my God. And they roost out in the open in the daytime in these big trees like that. And when dusk comes, they start flying. And when they start flying out of those trees. Oh my word, I would be nowhere it's, near. It's quite a sight. And they, they eat fruit, so. Okay, so if their wings are, you said three foot? Three feet. So how, the body can't be small. <laughs> That's uh, a it's a good bat. size bird. They're all wrapped up, you know, they, they yeah, wrap themselves together during the day. Wow. Yeah. Just. And of course, you gotta see a the koala, koala bear when you're in. So we went to a uh, a preserve outside of uh, Brisbane and uh, searched the forest around a preserve and, and somebody told us where there was one sitting in a tree so we went and, and found this one and of course they eat mainly eucalyptus leaves. He's just chilling there. And this is a uh, an olive-backed sunbird. Um, they're similar to hummingbirds in, the, in that they have this nice iridescent uh, throat patch and they sip nectar out of flowers uh, but they don't hover they either land on a flower and reach in and get it or if they can't do it that way they'll poke a hole in the base of the flower and sip it out that way let it drain out let it drain out or just you know put their beak in and get it okay 
So the next video we're going to see is about a bower bird. And bower birds build a special, what they call a bower. It's made out of sticks to attract a female, and they adorn it with different colored things. Oh. And each bower bird has its own little uh, color scheme that they're using. I must have skipped one here. This is actually a video of uh, Brolga cranes dancing. And you can see all those termite mounds in the background. Yeah. They're, uh, they're doing a little bit of a courtship dance here, similar to our sandhill cranes here. Do we, do we have a bower bird uh, video to show? There it is. This is a um, a bower bird. He's kind of tending to his bower. He's, he's rearranging the sticks a little bit. You can see he's got colorful things. Those, those are white snail shells on the ground. He's got some purple glass, or some, excuse me, some green glass and some purple things laying there. Now he just moved a piece of glass. So he's fixing it all up to try to get a mate to come in. That's what I mean when I talk about interesting things that yeah, birds do. Yeah, the things that they do. He's, yeah. It's all different. They all have a different personality. And one of the most colorful bower birds we saw was the regent bower bird. We didn't find his bower, but it was a beautiful bird, so we put the pictures of him in there. Those are striking colors. Very striking. And this is a satin bower bird. The female is on the left. She's dull, that's, which is typical in the bird world. The female is always the dull one. Not always, but most of the time. Yeah, I've noticed that, that the males yeah. seem to have more color. Males are the colorful ones. Uh, and he's on the right. And this is his bower, and he likes blue. Clearly. So he's, <laughs> he's got blue straws. He's got Anything blue bottle blue, caps. He finds it. Blue pens, blue plastic material. Looking for a mate that wants blue. Uh, yeah, well, that's his thing. He, he wants her to. So oh. I laid a couple of blue bottle caps on the railing by our picnic table and it wasn't long before he came and, and was able to pick up both of them Wow! and took them back to his bower. So I tried an experiment. I took two white bottle caps and I put it in his bower and then the next morning went back and they were gone. He, he was like, who <laughs> he, did this? He didn't want those white <laughs> bottle caps in his bower. He was probably mortified when he saw that color. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want that. So now the next video you're going to see is a, a pair of brown noddies. Uh, they're seabirds, and they're doing a little courtship dance, which is quite interesting. And uh, we found these out on the Great Barrier Reef on Michaelmas Key. So they, here they do a little sort of a dance type for each other. And and the other one moves closer, and then they're going to do a little uh, a bill touching here. A little sword fighting. <laughs> yeah, no, they're actually, it's, it's more like kissing, I would guess. That's hilarious. A little more of that bill touching. Aww. And this is our prelude to mating. So one of the birds we wanted to see was a southern cassowary, and it's uh, a, bird, a flightless bird, kind of like an emu, only a little smaller. And we had been trying to see one, we were unsuccessful. They're not very plentiful, so they're hard to find. But we had heard of a place about two hours away where uh, one had been seen, so our guide said, let's go there. So we started driving, and about a half an hour before we got to our destination, we came around a curve and here was one uh -huh. walking in the road so then he went worth your trip worth the trip <laughs> only an hour and a half so wasn't bad but uh so he walked down into this pasture and we got these photos and and off he went and we stopped at a place to look for some uh, waterfowl and uh, there was some cabins there and we found this little owl sitting in a rafter it's called a southern boo book not a very big owl but he was up in the rafters during his, at his day roost. And these, if you can see them, they're Papuan frogmouths. They're birds that 
uh, are nocturnal. They fly at night. They have very large mouths like a frog, hence the name, that they open and fly around and, and scoop up insects while they're flying. And during the day, they roost. They sleep. Okay, and you so can see how well night. that they, they blend into the bark yeah, on the very, tree. Yeah, very, if you're not looking If you don't know where close. they're at, they're hard to find. Yeah. So, but our guide knew where they were, so he <laughs> walked right up. And, and pointed them right out. Him, pointed them right out, so that was, that was nice. So, uh, up at O'Reilly's, which is a, a, a nice uh, uh, resort town, or not a town, really a compound, if you want to call it that, uh, up in the mountains out of Brisbane, they have a lot of parrots up there, and this crimson rosella was probably the most beautiful one that we saw up there. Lots of color. And while we were having lunch, <laughs> Uh, one of them landed on the table and walked up Susie's arm and started eating her apple with her. Oh my word, just, that's <laughs> so crazy. They're, they're quite tame, even though they're, they're actually wild birds. He's a little friendly guy. So our last leg of our trip was to the outback, and the outback is a dry area. It's not quite desert, but it's close. A lot of thorny uh, bushes, uh, low-growing bushes. There are some large trees where there's a sufficient amount of water at certain times of the year, you'll find trees. So some of the reptiles we found uh, was this shingleback. You can see why it's called a shingleback. Uh, it's a part of the skink family. And uh, it looks like he has two heads, but actually his head is on the right. You can see a, an eye there on the bottom he part He looks of the like head. a skink, just with more scales. Yeah. But it looks like he has two heads yeah, he does. the size of those. And this is a sand monitor. It's about five feet long, we saw. And he eats just about anything he can get, alive or dead. Oh. <laughs> so. Is he on the road there? Is that where he's you're just crossing just a cross river, the road? Crossing a road. And, and uh, we were quite a ways away, so we kind of snuck up on him a little bit. Now, this is a carpet python we found. It's, it's only about a four, four and a half footer, so it wasn't very big. And he's just catching small rodents and, and larger insects and things like that that he can handle. Is he smaller because he's the type of python, or is it just because he's young? Yeah, I don't think these grow to be very large. quite large like some of the ones you see in other places. This is a bearded, bearded dragon. dragon. And uh, this is typical posture for a bearded dragon. And they call bearded because he has those frills around his throat. And this is a western brown snake. Uh, we saw this crawling across the road, or slithering across the road. And uh, of course, Sherry needed a picture. She takes pictures. She likes snakes, so do I. So we jumped out of the car, and he started into the grass. So I ran around into the grass and headed him off, stopped him, while well, Sherry got this picture. Well, the interesting thing about this is we took, when we went back to our accommodations that night, we showed it to a local guy, and he <laughs> he got this look on his face like, what are poisonous? you doing? He said, this is one of the most poisonous Dangerous. snakes oh, of course. around, so <laughs> you shouldn't be messing with these guys. So uh, good thing we didn't try to pick them Note up. Note to self. But you can see that marking on his back there, those two little lines with a dot. That's, uh -huh. that's indicative of a western brown snake. And so, the lastly, but not leastly, uh, even though June spoke English very well, sometimes we didn't get the same message. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> so, so that's pretty much the end of that, of our trip to Queensland. That's a, that's a great picture. That's a great trip. Um, yeah. How long was that trip? That was uh, th close to three weeks, yeah. And we originally wanted to, I, I, when I first uh, picked the tour group, I told them I wanted to go from the top of, of Queensland all the way down to the south. And they said, don't do that. You're going to be spending all your time Traveling. in airplanes and, and, and cars. You won't be doing any birding. He said, it's such a big country. He said, break it up. Just break it. Just do Queensland. If you want to do another trip, which we intend to do someday, come back and do New South Wales and, and Victoria and in uh, Tasmania and those places, because yeah. you'll just, you know, you'll enjoy a lot more. That, that seems so. like it would make sense. So was it just the three of you on this trip? Just the three of us, yep. And plus the bird watcher. How, 
How do you find somebody that gives you tours? I mean, how do you know that who's going to be a good one and who's not? Is it word of mouth? Well, or? it's, um, they advertise, uh, you can go online and Google and you'll, you'll several, you'll say, uh, birding in Australia and you'll Google that and, uh, and, uh, it'll pop up and there'll be maybe two, three, four, five tour companies on there. So if you can recognize a name that you've heard before or just uh, some of them have, um, you know, things that tell them about them. Right, People bios have done, on them. And done, uh, uh, said, well, I like this one better than so-and-so or whatever. Right. But so you just kind of, it's kind of a crapshoot the first time. Okay. But uh, Once you get to know people and kind of yeah. they can recommend somebody else. Yeah, sometimes somebody you recommend, other times you just have to say, oh, this looks pretty good, let's try that one. And that's what we did here and we had a great time, so. What's the average cost of a, of a guide? Well, I don't know that because it's all rolled into the whole So they do trip. it within like a big, kind of a, a lump sum of everything? Yeah, well you just tell them what you want and they say, here's the price, okay. this includes everything except whatever they don't include, you right. know, maybe in, in country travel or in country flights or something like that, maybe extra. Are most of them all inclusive? Uh, most of them are all inclusive. Yes. Okay. Most of the time the food is included but, included, but we found out we were going to have a kitchen every time, so we, we said don't include the food this time because mm -hmm. we're going to cook everything ourselves, which worked out really nicely. So, but then you have to shop for the food. We did. <laughs> we, 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 we were always where there you. was a store. We were always where there was a place to okay, buy food. Okay, someplace. And are the local, are they nice? Yeah, I mean, they're not like we've never had any problem with people on any of the trips we've done. Because I know your wife with traveling in the beginning, she was a little concerned, clearly, yeah, about Yeah, we, we've never been threatened never by, a, by a human. We've been threatened by animals, <laughs> but not, not by humans. So, yeah, so. Okay, and about how many trips do you take a year? Like just one trip or one every Usually couple years just or a couple one. trips? Actually, we've got four of them scheduled in the next 12 months. Oh, and well, the that's next, quite a bit. The next one is to uh, New Guinea, where they have um, great birds there. Uh, I, I've forgotten the name of the, the birds we want. Birds of Paradise. They have most beautiful birds of paradise. So if you want to see beautiful birds of paradise online, just Google up birds of paradise and you'll see some of the most fantastic looking birds you've ever seen. So are your next four trips places that you've never been before? Never been okay, before. So this is well, all new. The last one will be to Ecuador again, our third trip to Ecuador, but so three of them will be to new place. places, yes. So. Interesting. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing us your trip to Australia. You're that welcome. looks like an amazing place. I clearly need to get out more. <laughs> just, I'm missing out on way too much. It's a lot of fun. Great. Thank you for watching the Nature Here show. Join us again for the next episode. Good job, you're done. All right, thank you. <laughs>